How are you friends? Prepared some bourbon night back with you. Well, I first would like to uh, apologize for uh, at least the last video, but probably a couple before that, when it uh, started to come to light that the uh, um, the camera was making noise and, and the microphone was picking it up and you could hear in the background kind of a clicking sound or uh, what uh, one person described as maybe a, a thousand cicadas um, and that I was able to once I got that feedback from uh, uh, Brian Betrin and from grandson of Kong um, I was able to do quite a lot of uh, individual diagnostics and what I found was that this lens here that uh, I've been using for probably the last five or six years I think finally gave up the ghost so stick around I'll get into some detail so what was what was happening um, it appeared that the um, autofocus motor was working overtime so every time I would move um, or raise my hand or adjust my hat or do any little tiny movement that the uh, autofocus motor would kick in and click 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 and it was in, um, constant it was all the time it just kept going and going and going and going and um, I because of my hearing deficit I really can't hear that kind of stuff and my sound engineer who's my wife uh, who has much better hearing than I do um, I, I had her listen to it and she said oh I can definitely hear that uh, noise in the background that clicking or whatever it is and uh, so I experimented with a, a number of different uh, options first of all I swapped out the lens and um, I have a backup um, lens it's exactly the same um, kind it is a uh, uh, Canon zoom 18 to 55 millimeter lens uh, it's a kit lens it's what came with the uh, camera when I first bought it and uh, I've been using it uh, pretty much every time I do a video and uh, using the um, camera for hobby purposes taking pictures of wildlife and deer and landscapes and stuff like that um, this uh, finally gave up the ghost and it just was making all kinds of noise so I swapped it out with a second um, exact same lens and that's what I'm using right now and it doesn't seem to be doing anything crazy right now and uh, um, I'm just pleased as punch that um, it, it finally was able to do it I messed around with the microphones I put mufflers on the uh, uh, microphone I raised the microphone well above the uh, uh, camera and uh, that when I was using this lens the clicking sound was still there and uh, so when I swapped out the lenses and I did a, a couple of uh, uh, test runs here during the afternoon yesterday I think we finally overcome the issue so I hope that this video comes across as just a little bit uh, better quality than the, the ones that you've uh, actually seen from an audio and visual standpoint the other thing that I wanted to uh, just mention and uh, again tonight we've got the uh, um, interview on CNN with uh, Harris and Waltz with uh, Dana Bash and uh, I, I am looking forward to watching it just to see what the interaction is like to see what the quality of the questions are just to see um, how the responses um, add up to anything cogent uh, anything that has any kind of meaning now don't uh, misconstrue what I'm saying I am not 
um, a Harris Waltz fan. I think uh, their policies and their flip-flopping on the policies is absolutely dangerous, uncalled for, and um, I, I just can't quite understand exactly what it is that they are trying to accomplish here. But with that said, and we've got the debate coming up, and there still seems to be some background wrangling about whether there's going to be an open mic or whether there's not going to be an open mic. And that's going to be on ABC, I believe, on the 10th. So that's just a, a few days away. And I'm a little concerned about um, whether that's actually going to come off as a real-for-real uh, um, real debate. We'll have to see how that goes. But what I'm mostly concerned about right now <clears throat> is um, the, the trouble that Trump is in. Yes, they are uh, relentless. Um, Jack Smith um, has filed a um, revised new indictment um, in response to the Supreme Court's uh, decision on uh, presidential immunity. So rather than just let the thing go away, he's decided to rewrite a little bit of the uh, indictment and um, charge him anew. And I'm concerned about that. That's lawfare. I believe, that's my opinion, that it's uh, election interference. They want Trump to lose the race. And as long as he is under indictment or he's under investigation for something, um, it will continue for a long, long time. Um, the other issue that is of grave concern is uh, the uh, upcoming potential, anyway, for sentencing for Donald Trump in the uh, quote-unquote hush money case, where he was found guilty of 34 counts of falsifying business records. Um, he is scheduled, at least the sentencing is scheduled for September 18th. Now, a lot of things can happen between now and September 18th, but um, the chances that Juan Mershon is going to impose a jail sentence on Donald Trump, I think, are uh, about 80% um, to the positive side on that. I think he's going to do it. And then that, of course, opens up uh, um, appeal processes and things like that, take it up to higher courts and all that to uh, appeal the sentencing and appeal the verdict and you name it. But the fact that they continue to go after him is um, just absolutely bonkers, I think. And uh, the way... Kamala Harris and Tim Walz is getting away with changing their uh, um, positions on pretty much every major issue that we have to deal with as American citizens, uh, inflation, the border, uh, energy, fracking, uh, electric vehicle mandates, all that nonsense. Um, they're getting a free pass from the media but yet the media is uh, salivating at uh, um, every mention that Donald Trump could be um, under more indictments and uh, potentially sentenced to jail. I really don't know what else to think about this. Now, I've got a special little treat at the end here uh, from our uh, local game cameras, and I think you may enjoy it, so stick around. There we go. I just uh, switched over to uh, my old camcorder just to make sure that I uh, can remember how to run the darn thing. Um, but with that said, a couple of days ago, well, actually a week ago, um, I pulled the SD cards from our game cameras and I picked up one of the most uh, amazing displays of uh, the white-tailed deer population around here. I just want you to take a, a look at it and make sure that you can certainly appreciate how absolutely incredibly wonderful um, living in 
um, this part of North Carolina can really be. These bucks are absolutely incredible and they frequent our backyard and front yard um, about every third or fourth day. They make a big uh, circuit around the neighborhood and back around. They love to be hunkered down in, in the creek beds and uh, I was able to uh, pick them up on our game cameras. So with that said, this is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you to be prepared always and I'll see you all on the next video.